My name's John Rees, uh, I'm a GP specialising in urology uh, and I'm going to talk a little bit about the chronic prostatitis and chronic pelvic pain syndrome as a condition so controversial there isn't even one name for it. Um, it's a difficult condition for patients, it's an extremely difficult condition for clinicians both in primary and secondary care and as a result um, Prostate U Cancer UK uh, with, their benign, with their remit for the management of um, benign prostate disease uh, have commissioned an expert group called the Prostatitis Expert Reference Group to carry out a literature search uh, of the, the evidence regarding the assessment and management of this condition and also some consensus work to try and produce a guideline suitable for use in primary care to assist particularly GPs in the, in the assessment and management of this condition. So the first most important thing is that prostatitis really, chronic prostatitis is under-recognised and that's because the symptoms, there's quite a wide range of symptoms and um, the guideline tries to classify symptoms into four main groups. Uh, urogenital pain, so that can be the classic perineal pain but also other areas such as lower back pain, suprapubic pain, groin, um, inguinal region pain. Uh, so urogenital pain, uh, urinary symptoms, voiding, storage, LUTs, those sorts of things. Uh, sexual symptoms uh, such as uh, erectile dysfunction, premature ejaculation and in particular ejaculatory discomfort and also psychosocial symptoms are all very familiar with the impact of the condition on the patient in terms of low mood and anxiety and also the fact that patients with those uh, psychological traits seem to be more prone to the condition itself. The guideline then tries to give some uh, some structure to the assessment of these patients in primary care. So firstly in terms of what examination things need to be done, so essentially recommending that GPs need to examine the abdomen and need to do a digital rectal examination, uh, both to assess the prostate itself but also to see if they can get an assessment of things like the pelvic floor and if patients with very tight hypotonic pelvic floor can often be helped by things like pelvic floor physiotherapy. So the DRE um, has a role there as well. Also, uh, in terms of investigations, a PSA blood test should be discussed with the patient. It can be a very useful part, particularly with the overlap of some of the symptoms of prostatitis with prostate cancer. Um, a urine test for infection, dip test with or without a midstream urine sent to the lab, and also in the appropriate patients, consideration of STI screening, particularly for chlamydia, using a NAT test. Once the diagnosis has been made, um, the guideline recommends that all patients who are antibiotic naive should be given one course of a good prostatitis appropriate antibiotic like ciprofloxacin, 500 milligrams BD for a period of approximately four weeks, coupling that with pain relief, so simple pain relief like paracetamol, possibly an anti-inflammatory. And if symptoms persist at the end of that, moving on to other strategies, a much more symptom-based uh, approach, so managing the urinary symptoms alpha blockers, finasteride, those sorts of things according to NICE LUTs guidelines. Managing the pain using anti-neuropathic agents like amitriptyline and gabapentin, trying to avoid opiate analgesia. Managing uh, sexual dysfunction, again following things like the British Society of Sexual Medicine guidelines. And managing psychoso psychosocial impact uh, which should be fairly bread and butter for, for primary care physicians. I think that the key message in the guideline is that prostatitis chronic prostatitis often means there's actually no problem with the prostate. A lot of the symptoms become a, a chronic pain problem uh, and that's why neuropathic agents have a role rather than uh, repeated courses of antibiotics and being very prostate centric in terms of treating the condition. Clearly whilst the guideline encourages the management of this condition early in primary care it also says that in patients with severe symptoms and patients who are not responding that they should be referred possibly sooner than they are currently into specialist services ideally to a clinician with an interest in the condition whether that's a urologist, a pain physician, sexual health specialist or someone else. So in summary, the, the prostatitis, chronic prostatitis guideline is available for GPs. It's available on the, on the Prostate Cancer UK website. Uh, it's there's a summary of the, of the guideline in trends in urology and men's health. And I'd really encourage GPs, particularly those with an interest in men's health and urology, to read the guideline and see if it can assist them in managing this condition. It's not impossible to treat. Uh, we just have to have a bit more of a structure. We have to get away from repeated courses of antibiotics and I think we can really impact on the severity of this condition and the impact it has on men's quality of life.